Oh. Well, hi, everybody. I must have dozed off for a little bit there. Hmm. Oh, hey, Cuddles. Hey, everybody. This is my pet, Cuddles. He's our class pet. Cuddles? What's up, buddy? Wake up. Hmm. Yeah, he must be sleepy. Anyway, today, what we're going to go over... <coughs> You're tasting my mouth. Uh, today what we're going to go over is how to creatively adapt your drawings. This is our creature feature part of the assignment. We're going to take all that pre-drawing information and data that you have so far, and we're going to take that, and I'm going to show you a demo today, and we're going to make some original creatures here, all right? And, and over the course of it, I'm going to look at some pictures, but what I draw is not going to be the picture. I'm going to use that picture to help guide me. So let's check it out. Okay, so I've got a couple of pictures I'm going to look at. This is actually a picture of a slow loris. It's kind of a primate little uh, monkey thing that lives in the tropical areas. And what it does is it's very slow. And I don't know why it's named loris, but it's cute. And it's got this kind of a jelly bean looking body. What I'm doing right now is I'm just studying the form of it. Now, I'm not going to copy these images. I'm going to use it to help me draw them. And so I'm just reducing them into basic shapes. You can do this over a photograph or whatever, but I'm just trying to get the general gist of how his body's made. And if I can draw it while I'm studying it, it'll help it stick to my brain better. And that's all I'm doing now. This is actually a lion, and I'm kind of intimidated by cat faces. You know, they're difficult to draw, but if you break it into basic shapes, it's manageable. And I see lots of triangles in this particular animal. You know, triangles, the relationship between the eyes and the nose, uh, the ears and the chin, and so on. And what I'm doing, once again, I'm just drawing over the top of the picture to help me know how those forms are. And you'll see the end result is going to look a lot different in the original drawing that I make in a few minutes. And that's basically the relationship of the forms. Knowing that, I can now go into the drawing um, the drawing portion of it and actually just kind of practice the basic shape drawings up here in the corner and I can use those to help guide me when I create. So this is actually a small upper corner of the canvas right here. Right now I'm just kind of redrawing from memory here what that slow Loris' body looked like in my mind. Um, so I've got that nubby little head on top of that jelly bean looking body. I'm just kind of doing a little stick figure arm here. And there's his leg and his other foot and his big googly eyes. I like the bug-eyed expression. I can't tell if they're happy or freaked out. And I'm going over here and I'm just going to look at the lion because once again, lions, you know, they're kind of crazy looking uh, cat features and so I'm just reconstructing that pre-drawing that I did, that you saw me do earlier from scratch just to make sure I have the, the knowledge down so that I can take these shapes and manipulate them and change them any way I want. So right now this is the relationship here between the eyes and the nose. And remember to constantly measure your form against itself. All right, say, all right, hey, where about would that eye line be in that lion's face? Halfway? Two-thirds? Who knows? This is probably the nose and the upper lip, and down here's the chin. And lastly, here's where the eyes would be. I'm trying to figure out how to do the rest of his jaw. And so I noticed that... All these triangles are sitting on top of kind of a circular shape where his skull is, this little oval. And that's the beauty of using rounded forms also, is that it can help you draw the picture in 3D if you need to. Triangles are flat. Circles, on the other hand, you can just plop stuff right down on top of them. And here's a schnoz. I'm not going to get all detail. I'm just planning out where his features go. kind of rounding things out here. And then I'll kind of mess around with, you know, where does the mane start? You know, where does this jaw start? There we go. It's starting to look kind of like a lion head here. 
And I'm not going to have a main in the finished image. I just kind of did that to study. One of the great things that you can do is, you know, go through an animal book, a book with these photographs, or print them off the internet. And you can either draw over the top of them first, like you saw me do in that red color, and then go onto another piece of scratch paper and try to recreate that just in basic shapes. That'll help you study your form. I mean, I'm not born knowing how to do a lion, but if I did enough of these, uh, over a period of time in different lion poses, you know, just turning the lion into these basic shapes, I guarantee you that you yourself, if you did this, you could create lions without having to look at pictures of lions. You would be familiar enough with their body parts. And that's how you create original work. Now there's always times to look at a lion picture and then create that lion picture. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, you know, as a student learning this technique, it's very important that you approach this from the standpoint that you want to grow beyond just copying what you see, especially a flat picture of a lion. If you're going to copy something, copy something that's 3D. There's things that has to have to go on in your brain to translate that three-dimensional form into a flat image, and you'll actually get more practice that way. And right now I'm just kind of capturing the general shape of the main and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to speed up the image here really quick. I'm going to speed draw this baby out. What I'm going to do is I'm starting with the head, uh, kind of like that slow loris. I'm starting with that oval, and I started with kind of a, a jelly bean face. And so now I'm wanting to have kind of a lion head on top of this oval. I decided that halfway through. So I started with the eyes and kind of a triangular shape of the head. And you'll notice it's at an angle. We call that foreshortening. Kind of if you lift up a dinner plate and tilt it a little bit, so it's in 3D, how that changes from a circle to an oval. Same thing with any forms. And you can draw, I'm just using the same form relationships here on where, where the eyes are, where the nose is, and all that. And I just rotated it just slightly. So we're kind of looking up at the face. That's original work right there. That's not copying what you see. That's not even the same image. But it's totally different. So I'm going to take that little slow Lois's, Loris's arm. I'm going to have him holding something. I'm going to have these nubby little feet. And I'm just using these little stick figures to help me. And here's his belly, and here's his upper torso. And I decided, hey, let's give him kind of a pot belly, right? And I wasn't too happy with his hands, so, you know, you can always go back and tweak things, you know, change the alignment. And, you know, that's just the process of pre-drawing. There's his little nubby hands, you know, and you just do that by, you can look at your own hand making a fist, and just you're stacking ovals on top of each other. At first I thought, hey, let's give him an umbrella but you'll see that changes. And I'm going to cut intermittently throughout here. You're not going to see the whole drawing because, you know, that would take a long time, even sped up. This is as fast as it can go in this program, but uh, but you'll see the gist of it. So I figured let's give him those slow loris googly eyes, but still have that lion kind of a head. You know, and right now all I'm doing is, um, you see how that pre-drawing is really light underneath? I did that in the computer, you know, I just turned it down. On your work, you want to make sure that your pre-drawings are always very very light that's so that you can erase them and right now this would be just you know phase two you're going you're out of pre-production stage now we're going into the production stage where we're actually creating the image on top of all that stuff that we use to help scaffold us you know to help help us build and so I'm rounding out the forms just going in and it's gonna be kinda of cartoony I'm gonna have a little bit of shading but look at my contour lines he's a furry creature and so I'm I'm drawing furry legs. And when you draw fur, one thing to think about is don't just draw the fur sticking straight out. Think what direction is the form going? And if that's the case, what direction would the fur be going? So like if you look at the edge of his belly, you know, the fur is poking up and to the right near the top, you know, about 9 o'clock, and then down at, say, 7 o'clock, it's poking down. You know, that's because it's in 3D. So I figured I'd add a hand over here, so I just kind of built it from scratch. And you can look at your own hand and turn it into basic shapes. Here's an example, once again, and nothing to look at. You can, you can do this with enough practice if you know the parts of the hand. Just putting those forms together. And I wasn't too happy with the umbrella. I figured, nah, let's give him a thumbs up. That's cool. Besides, I, you know, the umbrella just looks sloppy. So right now at this stage, I'm going in, getting rid of my pre-drawing lines. I've got the general gist of the figure drawn, and I'm just getting in there, and you'll see in the hand, I'm going to start laying down shading uh, using hatching over here. You see me layer on top. I shaded over that palm more than once. And look at my hatching strokes. They're going the direction that his fur is going. You know, there's actually a method to the madness. Turning off the pre-drawing. I'm going in here and blocking in my values. You'll learn what that is. 
I wanted a shadowed belly here to make it look round. And so all I did is I just blocked in where, the, where, it's, where that massive shadow is going to be, and I'm hatching the direction of the form. And I crosshatch his belly here. I wanted to give it kind of a rougher texture, like there's a different type of fur on his underbelly than there is on the rest of his body. And you'll learn this eventually, once we learn crosshatching and such. Giving him a belly button, and you know it's okay if your drawing evolves over the course of it. You're not stuck railroaded onto these uh, these rules here. I mean, these are just tools to help. You know, uh, one art teacher's techniques are going to be different from another. This is just what I found to be consistent throughout several different areas, not just my own, uh, you know, my own interpretation. But uh, giving him eyelashes is it a boy or a girl? Who knows? Looks like a lady. So Loris has had big eyelashes. But yeah, if you feel the need to change your drawing in the middle of it, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going in, I'm adding more value, kind of making some of the outside lines look a little thicker in some spots, especially where there's less light. You know, if that's going to be the darker part of the body, that's going to be where you know, there's less light. And so now here's the finished product. You know, turn it on and off the pre-drawing, see before and after. You might want to pause the pre-drawing just to take a look at both. But... That, my students, is that. A very sped up version. We're going to do several of these, and also in class. Uh, so, well everybody, I hope you found that helpful. We're going to do several demos like this, not only in class, but also on the internet. So, uh, as always in the future, if you have any uncertainties, make sure you're very, very mastered in the material before we move on. Uh, that just involves, you know, stopping the video and, you know, re-watching parts of it that might be confusing. So, as always, I... Hope you found this helpful, and I look, well, hey, Cuddles, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, guess he's awake. Right on. Oh, uh, well, do you want a hug? Okay. <laughs>